Okay, so this is my IoT controller and receiver, which are connected through the IBM Watson IoT platform. I've also used Node-RED to build the connecting application, and I'll explain the benefits of using these services in this video. So starting with the controller here, I'm using a generic Arduino Mega with an Ethernet shield attached. No particular reason for choosing this setup apart from this is what I had on hand. It's reading the data returned from this 3-axis accelerometer to understand the angle and pitch that I'm holding the controller at. It then sends that data up into the cloud, which is the Watson IoT platform, to be distributed to the receiver. Now for the receiver, I simply have a Freetronics Ether 10, which is an Arduino-based board with Ethernet capabilities. The receiver accepts the control data from the cloud and positions these two servo motors appropriately to mimic the position of the controller. I also have an Adafruit motor shield on top of the Arduino to help control the servos a little bit better. Now the overall setup looks something like this. We have two physical devices on the left and the right of the flow. These are the controller and the receiver you just saw at the beginning of this video. And holding it all together, I'm using the services and applications within the IBM Bluemix platform. In this case, I've used the Bluemix platform to deploy the Watson IoT service to receive and send data, and I've also deployed a Node-RED application to process the data. So on the left, it begins with the controller, which uses the MQTT protocol to communicate through the IBM Watson IoT platform. MQTT is a lightweight protocol that works specifically well for short data messaging on an IoT platform. It's fast and it allows me to not only send continuous data streams, but also allows multiple receivers to read the data from a single source, the MQTT broker. The controller publishes event data to an MQTT topic and subscribes to a command topic to receive instructions from the application. Topics work kind of like channels, and the devices and applications can choose what topics to subscribe or publish to. Multiple applications or devices can subscribe to a topic and thus the scalability benefits of using the Watson IoT and MQTT. In this case, I have an application subscribing to the controller's accelerometer data. I've used Node-RED to deploy this application. For those that haven't used Node-RED before, it's literally a drag and drop interface that develops a Node.js application without you having to code a thing. It's important to note at this point that a device cannot subscribe directly to another device's topics. Only an application or a gateway device can do that and must act as an intermediary between devices. I use the Node-RED application to not only read the accelerometer data and pass it on to the receiving device, but also to calculate and map that data to the relative positions for the servos on the receiver. The data is then passed on to the receiver through the MQTT protocol and chosen topic where the receiver then uses that data to adjust the servos accordingly to mimic the position of the controller. Now you might at this point be questioning why you would use the IBM Bluemix platform in between these devices as it seems like its role is fairly simple and could be easily set up yourself. And the answer to that is speed, scalability and functionality. Using the Bluemix platform, I literally had the Watson IoT service up and running within 15 minutes. The fact that it's all cloud-based allows me to ramp up and down as needed and the MQTT broker handles the subscriptions for me. The Node-RED application had a boilerplate or template ready to go, which also saw this service deployed in minutes. It took a little time to understand how it all worked, but now I can literally deploy a similar application within half an hour. Another major benefit to all this is the connectivity with other Bluemix services like predictive analytics, storage and cognitive services. So that's the quick overview of this project. For more detail, please check out my website and the instructable I've created to walk you through the specifics. If you have some tips or tricks to add to this, then please leave them in the comments below.